people would look at my character. I mean, when I had Paul E. convinced that when we did a little angle with Jack Victory, and Paul E. really thought, because I told Jack to hit me really, really hard with the guitar shit. Mm -hmm. When I came back in the locker room, Paul E. like, beat the right ring between me and Jack. Because he thought I was really, really mad. Right. So, if I can convince this motherfucker, then I know I can convince somebody else sitting at home. Right. So, it was more like, if you bring him in, he ain't gonna do what you say do. Right. And I'm a, I, I've been like a, I've been, I've been known, my mom used to always tell me I was rebellious as a kid. As I became a man, I was still, I'm still rebellious. Mm -hmm. So if you told me to do something, I'd do something totally opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. When it came down to the business part of it, well, Paul E would tell me to do shit, I'd get pissed off because I knew it was like a fuck job coming. Mm -hmm. That's when I started diving. That was some shit I used to do when I was a kid. I used to dive off the house in front of my mom's car when she come home from work and she got out the car and beat the shit out of me. So at one point, Paul E was mad at us, so he started making us do jobs every fucking week. So I said, fuck it. I said, I'm going to do something that they ain't going to even remember to finish. Right. I started diving. So the word kind of started getting around. Fuck. He going to dive and they going to do the job. The, what they going to fucking remember? Right. Who got pent or that fucking dive he just did? Mm -hmm. So now the word starts circulating. He ain't going to do what you say do. Right. If you tell him to do this, he going to do that. Mm -hmm. If you tell him to go left, he going to turn right. Mm -hmm. If you tell him don't get color, he going to try to cut the top of his fucking head off. And I would. Right. And to me, it'd be funny. You gotta understand, son, bro. When I came out of high school, I went straight to prison. And did almost three years in prison. I didn't get fucked then. So when I get in this business, I'm not gonna get fucked in this business. I didn't start wrestling until I was 30 years old, damn near. I'd be 47 my next birthday. Okay? So I came in this business as a grown fucking man. Right. I didn't come in like 2021, you know what I'm saying? Ready to play the game. Silver in the corner, put on your walk, man. Oh, God, I hope I get this. I don't give a fuck about that. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like everybody knew that. I went down to WWE. They gave me what they call Four Fingers Up, a tryout, and fucking uh, 04. And Malenko came up to me. He said, Jack, whatever you do, do not go up to Vince and speak to him. Unless he speaks to you. So I'm like, why? He said, you just don't do it. Now, I don't know if he was telling me not to do it to fuck with me or if that's just the rule of the locker room. But he walked by and I'm like, hey, how you doing, New Jack? Mm. I'm like, thanks for bringing me down, whatever the fuck. I hope I give you what you like. And I was done. And he looked at me like, okay. And I'm like, nice meeting you. I walked on down the hall and I started laughing. About 15 minutes later, I went back and looked at the lineup sheet at the board with the right your name on yeah. it. Mine had been swiped off. No way. That's ridiculous. All right. They had, they had, they had erased mine. Dude came over, he said, here's your pay for the night. He said, you can go over there and sit down and watch the rest of the show if you want to. I said, I don't want to see this shit. I said, I ain't on it. I said, I'm going to go over at the bar. So I walked out of the back of the goddamn building. It was in Fort Lauderdale. And I went across the street to a fucking seafood restaurant and got me something to eat. And I was watching some shit what they had on TV at that fucking restaurant. Wow. And then it was, matter of fact, it was me and MVP. And he was trying, he, he was trying to get a job at the time. So we walked, he's a jank man, I can't play this fucking game. I said, well, you might can, but I ain't going to play it. I said, I'm going out here to this fucking bar. I'm like, fuck this shit. So then I went, I walked back over there with him. He went back in there later on before the show was over with. I got in my car and went back to the hotel. Wow. And flew out two days later, came back home. That's crazy. Wow. You know, so I mean, I was just always known for just not, and it's not that I can't play. I've always been told I can't play by the rules. It ain't that. It's just that I just don't believe in the unnecessary bullshit that comes along with this fucking business. You know, the whole, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm glad, sir. I'm glad you let me come here, sir. Sir, can I bend over and let you fuck me up the ass? I mean, I don't fuck all that shit. I mean, for fucking what? Mm. I saw so much in ECW. I'm like, I can't do it. Mm. I said, that's a game that I cannot play. And I would not play. I would never fucking do it. And that was why I never went. Because Vince, he didn't tell, say it directly to me, but I was told from somebody somebody very reliable. He said he would never hire me because he's been told that he can't control me. Mm -hmm. And he That's said he can, true. and he said if he can't control you, he'd get rid of you. So instead of just saving the time of getting rid of me, he just said, fuck it. We just won't bring him in. But if you look at the Nation of Domination when they did that corny ass bullshit, 
and Dino was one of their backup singers. Right. That wasn't nothing but some bite off the fucking gangsters from Smoky Mountain in '94. And anybody know that'll tell you that. You know what I'm saying? With the, with controllable. Right. Workers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, they try to come out and do the whole, you know, we black and black and black, black and black bullshit and white people this and all that old corny and shit. But it wasn't convincing coming from Ron Simmons. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas it was like shit, I was just pulling up top of my fucking head because see, I never was given scripts to read. They never Paulie never said, Jack, here's a script. Well, that's the other thing. What would you have done if, if, if when you got to WWE, if you got the job and they start handing you scripts? Everybody? I'd have gave it back to them. Right. And I'd have told them the same thing I told Paul E. I said, give me the point. I want you to say, okay, tell me what am I doing, Paul E. What you want me to do? He said, Jack, I want you to walk across that fucking bridge and go to that store. Tell me how you will get there. Right. In your own words. Right. And the way that I'm gonna get to that fucking store, I have to say I'm gonna walk right across that fucking bridge and go in that store. That's gonna be so simple to fucking do. But with my version of it, I'd be more like motherfucker, I'm gonna go to this goddamn store, but before I get this motherfucking store, I'm gonna kill a bunch of motherfuckers going over that motherfucking bridge. I'm gonna throw some people off the motherfucking bridge. I'm gonna kill kids and shoot dogs and kick cats and all kind of shit. I'm gonna go in the store, smack the bitch, grab the shit, run out the motherfucking door, and I'm back and here's the fucking goods. He said, that's what I'm talking about. That's how my promos were set up. I said, give me the point. Tell me the point of my match. Let me give the deliverance. Don't you tell me how to do it. Mm -hmm. gotcha. And he was like, fine, here you go. And we stuck to that. And he said, I would never tell you how to cut a fucking promo. I mean, you see Raven sometimes, he be up right there writing this shit down and putting on fucking tape and playing it back and listening to it and trying to remember it. And some of them just, just script it all the way out. Right, right. And I ain't picking on Ray. I'm just saying. I mean, it is right, what the fuck true. it is. I mean, a lot of the guys be like, oh, shit. I see some people just be like, man. And then, for me, I'm just like, just give me the point. But see, I've been to WWE to see them do that shit. Right. When they was, you know, when I got that little time. <laughs> but I mean, it's already known. You get that early. You got to read this fucking script for your fucking promo. And you got to memorize that motherfucking word mm -hmm. word. They showed this shit on fucking on this something on YouTube. Well, they showed Hogan in the ring stumbling over a promo. He forgot the fucking words to. Right. And he just told him. But I mean, that's part of their shit. I could never do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my shit was really more believable. People really believed that what I said I was going to do. They was like, well, is it a work? Or is it a fucking shoot? Mm -hmm. I even had some of the boys come back and say, Jack, you know, we just, this is a match, right? Like, we for play play. It ain't like really real because... What you just said, I'm a little concerned about, you know what I mean? And, you know, my wife is out in the audience, and I mean, goddamn, we like, you know, we we getting paid for this, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I know. But if you give them something that's that, just that much more believable, yeah. then motherfuckers are always question, like I've always been questioned. Is New Jack really like that? Right. I don't really know. And I really don't want to find the fuck out. 